ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium, home of your Brockton Boxers, and today it's a matchup of colors as the Red Raiders of Barnstable come to town to face your Brockton Boxers. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's festivities, big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, Brockton coming off of a lackluster effort against the BC High Eagles in the Rotary Holiday Tournament. But new year, new uniforms, new attitude for the Brockton Boxers. Yes, indeed, and they look pretty good out there in their new uniforms. Good opponent for Brockton to be playing Barnstable. Let's see if Brockton can uh, get on the win train. Abu Kaba kicking it out to Nabil Ferbler. He gives it to Karan Harris. Harris one handing it back to Ferbler, driving inside. A layup is no good. Tipped out and brought down by Tahir Taylor, the big man in the paint. Yeah, I like say big, he's big. He's big. I like Brockton going right to the paint on their first shot. Even though they didn't make it. Look at it. Good. Good Harris, captain good for one, two, no good. Brockton coming down with the rebound. Gee, that butt bass, that ball was in and out of the basket. Tough break for the basketball player, the big man. Barnstable back the other way. Yeah, it looks like Brockton matches up well with this Barnstable team. I'm looking around on the floor. Brockton playing uh, man to man, and it put a little pressure right off the bat on the um, man carrying the ball up let's the court. Go, let's go. And inside for Taylor, he kicks it out to Will O'Day. O'Day to Cole Houston. Houston back to Devon Harris. Short jumper is good for Will O'Day. And Barnstable strikes first, two to nothing lead. Yeah, Barnstable tonight did a nice job moving the ball around quite a bit till they finally found the open man. Barnstable wearing their away all red jerseys, black and white trim. Brockton, new home whites with black stripes down the side. Red and black trim all around. Precious Soko chasing this one down over to Nabil Ferbler. Ferbler driving inside out to Karan Harris. Harris was fouled by Taylor, who was called for the push. Yeah, he's got some um, some meat on him, and he, there was a brush of the body. So he's going to have to be careful right off. He's already got one foul. Abu Kaba to Etinosa Kunbor, who was called for the travel. That's his second travel. Von Harris bringing it up for the Red Raiders. Laying it off, high off glass. No good, but was fouled on the way up. It was, it was good defense applied there. Nabil Ferbler called for that foul. Yeah, that shot was a little wild. Kind of one of those prayer shots. I hope it goes in shots. Again, this Barnstable team is not a big team. Except for their big man, big man number 33. Will O'Day, who's a senior and one of the captains. Bill Ferbler to Oko. Oko bouncing it for Abu Kaba. Kaba out to Ferbler. Leaving it behind for Harris. Harris losing it, getting it back, giving it to Oko, back to Ferbler. A lot of ball movement, four on the shot clock. Ferbler with a quick two is good. Ooh, that was pretty. Used the shot clock well. Yeah, we get rid of it. Let's go. Well, if the freshman and JV games were any indications, Will O'Day has his shot blocked by Abu Kaba. This game will turn into an absolute blow. The score of the freshman game was 81 to 40. JV game not much better, 73 to 30. Wow. Some impressive 
tight in the pipeline for Brockton. Number 44 for the JV team. Weighing in at six foot, eight inches tall. You see O'Day likes that short little eight foot shot. Three for Harris, no good. Oko with the rebound. His turnaround floater is good. Nice job getting that rebound for Oko. Followed the shot. Set himself right there where the ball is going to um, go and made the easy layup. Isaiah McTaggart on the JV team. Six foot, eight inches tall, weighing in at about 190. Wow. It's scary. So we should see him next year. Maybe the end of this year. Uh, near the, the um, season winds down to the playoffs. Oko to Karad Harris. Bill Ferbler trying to create some space has his dribble tipped. Karad Harris with three on the shot clock. Abu Kaba drawing a foul. No, Brockton didn't really move the ball around that well on that particular play right there. They looked like they did a lot of dribbling. Not a lot of movement by the other players. Cabo with a quick layup off the inbounds is good. Yeah, nice inbound pass right there. Good movement there by the boxers. They went right to the ball. Coach, coach. Verbal call for his second foul. That's a push. Sonny Oak and Lola will come in to replace Ferbler. It sounds like Coach Bowen wants him, wants his teammates to his team to play a little bit tighter defense. He's losing his mind over there on the Brockton bench. Yeah, he wanted, on that particular play, he wanted his Brockton player to grab the basketball on the rebound. Don't tap it, grab it. Run, get on the ball. Other marching orders from head coach Bob Bowen. Five on the shot clock. Etanosa Kumbor comes up with a block. The buzzer will sound shot clock violation against the Red Raiders. Yeah, the... Cole Houston wasn't paying attention to the shot clock as it wound down. Oak and Lola bringing it up over to Karan Harris. 2.30 left in the first quarter, a high scoring game, six to six. The score, Oak and Lola crossing his man up. The crowd gets loud. Karan Harris for three is good. He saw that one in all the way. Yes, he did. Box is really playing some pretty good defense. Etanosa Kumbor fighting for the rebound, gets it, and he was fouled by number double zero, Zeb Tilton, the sophomore. Yeah, Zeb went up and um, caught his arm on the play. Not really a smart foul. Ron Harris to Precious Oko. Back to Oak and Lola in for Kaba, who was fouled. Now, right there, that was a mismatch that Brockton was trying to exploit. <laughs> Oko in for ET. Pass is intercepted by number 10, Devon Harris. Harris to Tilton. Hilton back to Harris for three, no good. 
Willow Day down low, short jumper, no good. Oak and Lola fighting for the rebound. Rather, it was Abu Kaba all the way up for Oko and Poor us, we're almost barreled into by basketball players going full speed ahead. Well, we're always around the action, Matt. As you can see, we're right down here. Tariq Yaya and Tejan Glendardi, both in for the boxers. Oak and Lola to Oko, down low for Glenn Darty off the glass. No good, was fouled on his way up. He will immediately be at the line for two shots. Yeah, Glenn Darty felt the mismatch and went right up with the basketball. Joe Yelmokis in for Michael Turner, who has two fouls against him. Okanola tipping it to Kaba off the glass and in. Yeah, good awareness underneath by number 15 for the boxes. Pass swatted by Glenn Darty. Preshzoko is in alone and his layup is tipped from behind by Devon Harris. Good effort on defense to get back. Yeah, I don't think he realized that the possible player was hustling as you might see here. Good defense there by Darty. Puts it out front and he is blocked. His shot is blocked. Nice defense by Barnstable. Yeah, Abu Kaba, he should have went up a little bit stronger to the basket. 12 to six, the score, Brockton on top of Barnstable. Just under a minute left in the first quarter. Rockton basketball. Oko long in for Okan Lola. Back to Oko. His long three is no good. Okan Lola tipping it to himself. Goes up for the layup or a couple of bounces high off the rim and in. Yeah, nice job. He went up strong with the ball. Houston to Willow Day, his three is no good. Kava's layup, no good. Barnstable coming down with the rebound, shot clock is off. 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. Tilton for three is good. Gonna stuck on the back of the rim there for a second. Brockton has time to get off a shot. Okanola yeah. has it tipped and the buzzer sounds, the first quarter has come to an end. The score, 14 to nine, Brockton on top of Barnstable in what was quite honestly a very lackluster first quarter for both teams. Yeah, but the, the positive thing for Brockton was they played great defense. They blocked a lot of shots. There was a lot of mismatches that they took advantage of, played a lot of inside basketball, um, but uh, they can work on the scoring a little bit better. But overall, Five point lead, first quarter, it, it was lackluster as far as scoring. Wasn't a lot of scoring on either end. Um, Bonstable is just gonna start, has to start hitting some shots. Be a little bit quicker when they shoot their shots because Brockton's got them on the, um, the defense as far as blocking shots. 14 to nine at the end of the first quarter. We'll bring you second quarter action right after this.
Back in action here at Staff Gymnasium, 14 to nine, second quarter is underway. Brockton on top of Barnstable. Yeah, good hustle right there by Barnstable's big man, one of his, one of their big man, number 35. A sophomore, Joe Yamokas. Am I close, Mad Dog? I was going with Yamokas. So. Yamokas. Two of two at the line was Yamokas. Oak and Lola has his shot, or his pass rather, tipped by Harris. Harris. Goes skidding to the floor. Oko to Kaba, back to Oko. Oko driving inside, stops, throws down low for Yaya, who's fouled. Yeah, nice quick inlet pass there. Underneath to the big man. Zip Tilton called for the push. Sonny Okalola for three is good. Yeah, Okalola's not, not bashful about taking that outside shot for a big man. Not bashful at all. Gives the box the five point lead. Marcelo Louis Charles getting ready to come into the game along with Juris Harris. Great defense by the boxes. Yeah, yeah, to Okalola. He takes a three with a lot of confidence. I always say, if a big man takes a three, follow your shot. Absolutely, take out a few <laughs> bodies on the yeah, way in, yeah. too. 16-11, <laughs> Brockton on top. Tariq Yaya is in alone, slowing up a little bit, lays it off the glass and in. Yeah, Yaya just picked his pocket. Kind of nonchalantly went down on the um, break and nonchalantly put it in. Here you go right here. You see him just kind of chugging down the court. Still made the play as a uh, bounceable player. Got his hands on the ball, but uh, Yaya put it right in. Juris Harris to Louis Charles to Okinawa to Yaya. Called for the travel, but this three would have been good. Ooh, I would have liked to see that go, go in for good. Or count. Yeah, yeah, starting to feel it a little bit. 18 to 11 the score, Brockton on top. Willow Day turnaround jumper, no good. 35 comes down with it, Yell Mokus. Golden opportunity right there by Bonsko. Went a little bit too hard and a little bit too much spin off the glass. Should have been an easy two. Jerry's Harris for three is no good. Go, go, go. Marcus Azor getting ready to come in for the Brockton Boxers. Okanola chugging, goes behind the back, impresses the crowd, lays it off the glass and in. Wow, yes he did. You heard the oohs and ahs from the crowd going behind the back. Shake and bake into the basket. Shake and bake and hit it with that sauce. <laughs> Oak and Lola for three is no good. You know he was feeling it. Tilted down low as it swatted away by Tejon Glendardi. Oh, Dave short two around the world and out. Glenn Darty coming down with the rebound to Marcino Louis Charles. Louis Charles in with speed, laying it up off the rim and no good. Up and down the court they go. Oak and Lola ripping down this rebound to Louis Charles up for Glenn Darty. Two on one. Yaya calling for the alley oop. Won't get it. Glenn Darty off the glass and in 22 to 11. Brockton on top. That was great passing on the transition game right there for the boxes. That's what the coach likes to see. Easy basket, lay in. Glenn Darty with another block. Now Oak and Lola to Juris Harris. Harris to Oak and Lola. Hard across for Yaya, back to Harris. Back to Oak and Lola. 
Antonosa Kunbor for three, no good. Yalmok is coming down with the rebound for the Red Raiders. Yeah, Brockton again doing an excellent job in his second quarter with the defense. Well, Houston's attempting three, no good. Azor into the game. Yaya is out. Azor to Harris, back to Azor. Cross for Louis Charles in for Glenn Darty off the glass, no good. He was fouled on his way up and Dijon Glenn Darty will be at the line for two. Yeah, Glenn Darty, a good hustler underneath when he gets in the ball game. Play of Glendardi's second block, about 45 seconds. See, the basketball player made it easy for Darty with the block. He barely got his feet off the ground when he had the basketball going to the basket. Yeah, Mokas for two, no good. Glendardi with the rebound. Quickly up for Julius Harris. Off of a Red Raider. Ball is ping ponging around everywhere. <laughs> And out of bounds off of Brockton. Michael Turner with it for the Red Raiders. Over to Devon Harris. Harris working his way inside. Took about 17 steps. Yeah, he put, he put the burners on to get to the basket get just by the defender and got the foul as he went up for the um, layup. Made the basket a chance for a three point play right here. You'll see it right here. Let's see if he takes a lot of steps as Mad Dog said, one, two. Yeah, he, he got him in there. Just his speed made it look like he took some steps. Marcus Ezor was called for that foul, his first. Next foul against Brockton results in a one and one situation for the Red Raiders. Oko down low, flying along the baseline off the glass and in. Wow, that was just too easy. Nobody challenged him from the Red Raiders. Harris fouled down low. Precious Oko called for the push. One and one situation for the Red Raiders. Devon Harris make his first, he will get a second. Come on, Come on. 2.54 left. Vic Ortiz, as you can see there, famed former coach of the Brockton Boxers in attendance. With his wife. With his wife, Mrs. Ortiz. Yes. Oko for three, in all the way. Yeah, Oko's feeling that shot right there. Nice form, nice touch. 29-13. And Barnstable forced to call a timeout. And you'll see it here on the replay. Gets his squares up. Yep, squares up nicely. Yeah. And he knew it when he let, kept his arm up there. And I, like a snake, it looks like, you know, the guy when they shoot that shot, they their hand and their wrist are bent over like a snake and their arm stays up and they know it's good. 241 left in the first half. Brockton on top, 29 to 13. Yeah, Brockton, these last three minutes or so, four minutes, they slowly built their lead to uh, 16 points with great defense. And um, between great defense and Barnstable's cold shooting, 
when they've had an open shot, they can't seem to hit it. Taylor down low. Yeah, he stepped out of bounds. Good defense there by the boxes. Abu Kaba spinning with it, creating some space off the glass. Counted and one for Abu Kaba. Yeah, nice job by Abu Kawa. Took advantage of what the defense gave him. A chance for a three point play. Three point attempt, no good. Azor coming up with the steal. Oko for three, and instead of an extra one, it's an extra three for Precious Oko, who has caught fire 34 to 13, Brockton up by 21. Yeah, nice to see him hit those shots. I believe that was a charge. A little spin move right there. Taylor called for the hold on that one. Taylor down low out to Harris. Cold Houston catching it behind his back. He was followed by Etinosa Kumbo, or rather Jerees Harris called for the hold. Yeah, it was a good call. Jerees did follow him. That was good defense by the boxes. They didn't make it easy for him. And that's what's going on in this ball game so far. Brockton is not making it easy for Bonstable Red Raiders when they take their shots. For the most part, boxes are right on them. A lot of block shots, um, a lot of um, shots that are altered because of Brockton's defense, in-your-face type of defense. Well, Brockton's got a 20-point lead. Azor over to Karan Harris. Glenn Darty up for Harris to Azor. Azor driving inside to Etinosa Kunbor. Oko for three is no good. E.T. off the backboard, fouled on his way up. Oh, that was excellent effort by E.T. He went up strong over everybody. Got the rebound and, and smartly just put it right back up and, and got the foul. And it should have been called out of bounds against Brockton. That ball bounced off the rim and hit Ooh. the uh, support beam holding the, the net up. Good observation. So Brockton gets a break. I meant to go in the first half, 35-14. You saw... Vic Ortiz in the house, former coach of the Brockton Boxers, but the popular figure here at Staff Gymnasium. Who wouldn't be when you lead the home team to 386 wins, five sectional titles, and a state title. Wow. A couple people have gone up to Mr. Ortiz to pick his brain about basketball. I'd like to get his thoughts back when Brockton was competitive against the Catholic schools. What his thoughts are on the competition now, yeah. or lack thereof. Here we got the replay. Darty going up nice and strong. Just overmatched. Devon Harrison alone. His. Shot swatted by Karan Harris. Wow, that was a great effort on both ends by the offensive player and the defensive player. You'll see it right here. They go up high and great block. Did you see a foul? Was there a foul? No. But one was called anyway. Yeah. Great replay job by our uh, Russ. A team down there in the um, van.
BCA Sports Central doing a great job. More on the all-star team later. A few surprises in there. Yeah. So stay tuned. Well, I tell you what, so far they've delivered a great first half. Ron Harris to Marcus Azor. Harris looking for Glenn Dart. He doesn't connect. And I think there was a little miscommunication there between the two boxes. Eleven point six to go in the first half. Brockton on top, 37 to 14, 23 point edge for the boxers. Cole Houston stops, pops, five seconds to go, and his three is good. Buzzer sounds, the first half has come to an end. Miles, 37 to 16, Brockton started off slow, but they've turned on the Jets. Yeah, they did start off slow in that first quarter, but the second quarter, like you said, they just turned on the Jets as far as defense as well as offense, but the defense gave them a lot of offensive um, chances to score on the, on the um, ensuing play. What does Brockton have to do to keep the momentum going into the second half? Just keep playing tough defense. They're, 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 there's a mismatch there on a lot of positions, so just keep playing tough defense and the um, win will come to you. 37 to 16, Brockton on top of Barnstable at the end of the first half. We're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School for second half action between the Barnstable Red Raiders and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's festivities, the one, the only big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, it's a big game when there's new uniforms in town and Brockton has some fresh new kits. Yeah, and they're show, showing out with them in their defense, um, doing a great job um, just stifling, stifling Barnstable on uh, the offensive end there. Barnstable just a lot of shots blocked in that first half, and um, that second quarter was just awesome for the um, boxes. 37 to 17, the score coming into this third quarter. A lot of celebrities in attendance. Vic Ortiz, former head coach. Principal and associate principal of Brockton yes, yes, High School, yes, Sharon yes. Wolder, and Mr. Perkins, both in attendance. The Brockton High cheerleaders are in attendance. Yeah, they, they look great this year. It's always nice to see the uh, cheerleaders here with the uh, with the basketball team. And who could forget the biggest celebrity of them all? Been all over the place. He's known internationally as the six-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated Nubi Rato. You know, we're blessed with his presence this evening again. Blessed is the pretty much the right <laughs> word. <laughs> we got... During the, during the Rotary Holiday Tournament, 
Mike the Postman Simmons brought his family to the games. Mm. Beautiful family, beautiful family. We, we got his three-year-old daughter to say six-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated Nubi Rathel. And without a hitch. Without a hitch, without a hitch. <laughs> he didn't talk to me for like three days after that. <laughs> Look, if, if, listen, if a three or four year old can tell you who Nubi, Nubi Rato is, then he's well known in he's the city. Well, he's well known. Karan Harris followed on his way up. As he comes up limping, hobbling a little bit. Lest we forget Emmy nominated. Emmy nominated. Six forty nine to go in the third quarter. Thirty eight to seventeen injury timeout on the floor. Maybe it's a hamstring. It's close enough to the end line. Of course, if Paul Mandeville were here, we'd say grab him by the ankles, <laughs> drag him off the court, and start playing let's, again. Let's play again. Of course, famed writer for the Enterprise, Glenn Farley, is also in attendance tonight. Well, maybe we'll see this injury on the replay. Yeah, and it's like he came up hobbling there. You can see it right there. <laughs> I don't know if you if you noticed, uh, Matt, that uh, Nubi, Nubi Reto has a really sharp um, sweatsuit on there. It's like kind of like Spider-Man-ish, you know? Looks like, it honestly looks like the new Nike warm-ups for the Okay, Rock, the all right. Boxers. Thought I saw spider webs on the red part, you know. He's styling and profiling as a cameraman this evening. Two of two at the line. Presented to Nosa Kumbor. And at Nosa Kumbor coming up with the block is Tahir Taylor. That was Looked pretty. Like he was shooting straight for the rim. Oh. That was pretty. Not today. N not in my house. <laughs> Thirty-nine to eighteen. I tell you, Taylor at the line. He's a senior, and he's a real leader out there because he goes bangs with the biggest of them out there. He's not tall, but he hustles and uh, gives 100% while he's out there. He's a big boy. Yes, he is. I guarantee you, Mad Dog, he played on the basketball football team. As a lineman. Yes. Carn Harris to Furbler. His three is no good. Fouled from Behind the line was Furbler. He'll be at the line for the rear three free throws. Yeah, um, I guess he's not going to the line for some reason. He looked like he was fouled when yeah, he shot it. Exactly. Cole Houston working his way in. Or is it down low from Mike O'Day who wasn't quite ready? It was a low pass. I'll give it give him that. It was, but he should have had that. Furbler with a quarter no good. Oko on the rebound is rather it was Abu Kaba. Yeah, nice job by Abu Kaba. Stand right over there in his lane and positioned just perfectly for the rebound. Houston 
Working against Glenn Darty. Three attempt, no good. Cron Harris coming down with the rebound. So here, Taylor rips it away, counted in one for the big man. Yeah, and he was hammered in the head when he put that shot up as he's trying to shake it off at the free throw line. Nice hustle. We might see it here on the replay. Oh, we saw that. This is the. Um, yeah, he was definitely fouled when he shot it. Yeah. Speaking of shaking out the cobwebs, you big man to hear Taylor. Still a little bit out of it. Yeah, you could tell by his facial expression, and he's huffing and puffing. But he makes the free throw. 41-21, Barnstable has brought in right where they want him, down 20 points. Oko off the glass and in. He took advantage of the opening, went right in and scored the easy two. Long two is good for Mike o uh, Will O'Day, rather. Oko driving baseline. Glenn Darty tipping the wild pass off the glass, no good. Stevon Harris still being worked on on the Barnstable bench. Glenn Darty trying to come up with another block. The wild shot goes to Abu Kaba, coast to coast off the rim. 17 and a half bounces and it finds its way to the bottom of the net. Yeah, nice job. He, reason it had a lot of bounces because when he put it up, it did not go off the backboard. It went right off the rim and it kind of bounced around and finally fell through the rim for two. Constable calling a timeout. 45 to 23 boxers on top. 435 left to go in the third quarter. You might see it here. Good transition game by the boxes. Counted five bounces off the rim before it found its way in. Again, the boxes are looking pretty good in those new uniforms this evening. Powder white with black stripes. Letters and numbers outlined in red. Pretty good look. Yes, indeed. And along with the new uniforms, according to my inside source, was a deal for the Nike Hyper Dunk shoes that all the kids want. In fact, they're the shoe that Nabil Furbler is wearing. Uh, those are Under Armors. And the new, the new the new shoes called what now? The Nike what? The Hyper Dunk. Hyper Dunk. The Hyper Dunk. I must be out of touch because that's the first time I ever heard of the Nike Hyper Dunk. So basically, back in, back in my day, mm -hmm. I was allowed to get a pair of shoes anywhere up to forty-five dollars. If my parents were feeling generous, it'd be fifty. Wow. Well, Nike Hyper Dunks MSRP, manufacturer's suggested retail price, is $140. Let me catch my breath. Well, I'll tell you, Mark, nice shot there. I'll tell you, when I came to Brockton High back in 1970 as a freshman, Brockton High just opened up. I told my father that I had to have a pair of Converse Chuck Taylor sneakers and he took me down to A.C. Grady's on Legion Parkway, and uh, he bought me a pair of uh, Chuck Taylor Converse All-Star sneakers for $11.50, and that was big money. Yeah, that was big money back then. That was big money. Precious Oko for three is good. Brockton doubling up the Red Raiders, 50 to 25. Anyway, more about this deal. Any Brockton boxer athlete could get the Nike Hyper Dunk shoes for $80. Wow. So, 60 bucks off and $80 for a pair of shoes is still. Still, yeah. You know. So do you know if anybody got the, uh, cause I'm not sure what the Nike Hyper Dunks look like. They get those big heels on them. The big foam heels popping out. Houston.
first into Michael Turner. <laughs> Stepping out of bounds was Willow Day. Fox has got this lead up to 25 points. Oko Bangenbody's trying to fight for his rebound. Cole Houston comes away with it. Wow. I, uh, nice, nice defensive stand right there. Wasn't quite sure who uh, drew the foul, but nice job. Offensive foul against the Red Raiders. Call for the charges. Yaya had his feet planted. Oko hard in for Tijon Glenn Darty. Out to Yaya, Yaya down low for Glenn Darty off the glass and good ball movement for the boxers. Excellent ball movement, Mad Dog, excellent. Cole Houston for three out of nowhere is good. One of the few outside shots that the Barnstable Red Raiders have made this evening. Easy two right there by number 35. Ooh. Azor behind the back. Laying it off the glass, no good. Glenn Darty coming up with the rebound. His putback attempt, no good. Out to Oko. His three is no good, and he stood there watching it. I tell you what, if Azor would have made that shot after he nicely put it behind his back, the crowd would have erupted. And here you'll see on the replay, good defensive block there. Brockton having a field day this evening, blocking shots. Jerice Harris in the game. He is working against Michael Turner. Glenn Darty committing the foul. Nice little shovel pass by Taylor as he went to drive to the basket and very nicely just slipped it to the big man on his right and almost... Uh, Almost a three-point play, but he's going to go to the free throw line. Try to make two. Devon Harris for the Barnstable Red Raiders. It's wearing the Nike Hyper Dunks. Well, I haven't seen him dunk yet. I haven't seen him dunk. Or get hyper. Yeah. Azor for three. No good. Glenn Darty to Jerice Harris. Harris going with the LeBrons. Just because of the power of technology, we're going to get the MSRP on Jerry Harris's LeBrons. You see right here, a lot of steps, good defense. Azor with five seconds left to Okinola. Okinola over to Harris, two seconds. Azor, last second, three, no good. Other sounds the third quarter has come to an end. 57 to 29. Brockton on top of Barnstable. Miles, Brockton kept the foot on the gas. They exactly, that's exactly what they did. Kept their foot on the gas, did not let up with, on the defense. Barnstable still having a tough time trying to score some points. And uh, basically, Brockton has just took com command of this uh, basketball game since the second quarter. 
57-29. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you fourth period act, uh, fourth quarter action right after this. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Get the fourth quarter underway here. The LeBrons that Jerese Harris is wearing. Not that bad. MSRP of $160. Seven to twenty-nine the score. Brockton on top. Azor to open Lola. Wide open three is good for the big man. Yeah, nice to see him hit that outside three. Gives him a lot of confidence. He's having a good game. the score. See the big man right there take the long three and hit it. And we've got Taylor at the free throw line at the other end. Brockton coming in at three and three. One of those wins not counting for the MIAA playoffs coming against Charleston in the Rotary Holiday Tournament out of division. Come on, guys. Come on. Here we go. Let's go. Wins against Marshfield and at Bridgewater Raynham. Actually, I think, they're, I think that puts them at two and four. I think yeah, they I lost think to BR. Yes, they did, I believe. So two and four for the boxers. Two of those four losses coming against the Eagles of BC High. Barnstable coming in at two and three, so a very evenly matched record-wise as the pigman hits the floor. Number three fouled hard was one second on the shot clock. Yeah, you'll see this tough boxer defense. Good hustle by Taylor, the big man for the Red Raiders. Then the little man goes in bravely. And uh, gets fouled. That's Sherwin Sharp, a junior. Sherwin looks like he's about 5'5", five, 5'4". Five, five, yeah, he's a little guy. Danny Woodhead-esque. Yaya from way downtown, no good. Willow Day fighting for the rebound with Sunny Oak and Lola. It will be a jump ball. Number 34 on the court, easily the tallest member on the court. That is Tyrone Victor. Coming in at six foot nine. One can only dream. Yeah, I had down low and Victor just reached over everybody to get the rebound. <laughs> He went over three guys' heads and just, whoop. Yeah, I'm not sure what Yaya was doing right there, what his intentions were to do with that basketball, but he's at the free throw line. Missing his first attempt. Oh, 
and one to two at the line was Yaya, 63 to 30, brought it up by 33 points. Sam Rosen getting ready to come in the game as Houston hitting a three. Azor to Oak and Lola for three, and he's feeling it he's now. Feeling he it. looks at the Brockton Boxer fan section. And, and his body language said, I'm feeling it. The fade away three for Oak and Lola. And he wants more. He's playing tough defense as he's been all evening. Oak and Lola coming up with the rebound. Gets around one man, laying it up. No good. Tip up for Yaya is no good. Jerry's Harris kicks his down. You'll see it comes out of bounds. You'll see the big man way out there. Look at the confidence. Nothing but bottoms. Yeah, and like you said, a lot of confidence. As you can tell in his body language. His kicks got mad buckets tonight, as Isaiah Thomas would say. Okanlola coming up with a steal up to Drees Harris, laying it up, no good. Okanlola on the rebound, gets his own rebound, laying it up. Yeah, he's going to be called for the shoulder. He put his shoulder in to the uh, basketball player to give himself some room, and uh, he knows it. But great hustle. Okanlola's having fun tonight for the Brockton Boxers. You know, I, I, I think I got a name for a Okanola, the oak tree. The oak tree. I mean, he is very strong in the paint. Azor getting around, four Red Raiders laying it up and in. Wow, nice pretty spin move off the um, glass and in for Azor. Getting in on the action on the showtime. Ron Harris for three, no good. We'll see this on the replay. Azor coming down strong. Whoop. Gives himself some room and nicely that off the glass. Simple little move that got between two Red Raiders. Oak and Lola will have a breather on the bench. Exactly. A career day. Yeah, he gets a nice hand from the crowd. Well deserved uh, applause for it. Great effort offensively as well as defensively in this uh, basketball game. Willow Day, short two. His famous eight foot jump Jumper, shot. Jumper, yep. Azor to Karan Harris down low for Victor off the glass, no good. Harris comes in to clean up the garbage out in front, 70 to 35. Brockton doubling up the Red Raiders. Ooh, nice, nice hustle by Harris. He went up high for that basketball. Harris bat angle shot. Victor coming down with the rebound. Victor underhanding it, looking for Azor. Doesn't connect. Cole Houston stops and pops wide open three, and he's still manages to miss. Azor with it now for Brockton, 3.20 to go. Azor to Jerese Harris, his three is no good. Bron Harris on the offensive board, short floater is good. Yeah, Harris is playing his position right now, two quick ones as he came into the game and he's gotten involved very quickly, making the most of it here in the fourth quarter. Wayne Sharp for three, no good. Victor coming down with another rebound. Harris to Azor, Azor driving inside. Looking for Glenn Darty, who can't keep a grip on the ball. Cameraman down there, got any action. With that, we want to thank the cast and crew for tonight's festivities. Barnstable against Brockton. At the helm, the head of the ship tonight, it is not the award-winning director and producer, Paul Mandel. Who is it? It is the one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. I tell you, did an excellent job this evening. 
like you said, he delivered an A game tonight. His, he was on his A game down there in the truck. And now that you see an instant replay, good segue there, Mike the Postman Simmons. John Pinto on instant replay. Is, is that John right there holding the camera to the right of your screen? That is Rob Curry. Oh, that's Rob, okay. That's Rob. On graphics, we have Danny Steele Jr. On camera, of course, you can see Rob Curry. Rob doing a nice job this evening getting involved with the action. Danny Steele up top. Nice job by Danny. Who could forget? Who could forget? The award winning, six time award winning director and producer and Emmy nominated Nubi Ratto. Doing an excellent job down at the other end. There's Nubi. Well, there's me. Of course. Myself, the Mad Ooh. Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action along with big game Miles Jackson. Right back at it here at Staff Gymnasium Tuesday night as the New Bedford Whalers come to town. Ooh, nice little shake and bake right there. Brockton playing New Bedford. Well, depends how you determine the meaning of playing. New Bedford in hockey last night. Miles, you want to take a guess at the final score? This, um, is, a ho this is a hockey game. Hockey game, game. okay. Hockey, so. Then then, boxers must have scored at least uh, seven uh, goals. That's what the scoreboard stopped at. Well, you tell me, what was the score? The final score, 12 to nothing. Oh, 12 nothing. Sounds like a football nothing. game. Two touchdowns, both extra points fail. Azor to Harris for a three from way downtown. Oh, bounces off the rim, no good. Victor on the putback, and he has his first points of the night and the season. Yeah, nice job by the young man down there. Tyrone Victor. Looks like he's has a lot of potential ahead of him. He's only a sophomore. Brian Harris is going to be called for the foul. That 12 to nothing Brockton against New Bedford hockey. It's been this way for many years now. Durfee is not much better than New Bedford. And it begs the question and the rumor that after this season, it'll be a big five division instead of a big three. Yeah, that's what the rumor is, huh? That's what the rumor is. Schools are not being disclosed, but I would love to see Bridgewater Raynham in there. I know you got a lot of sources out there with information that they want to give you. You just let us know. I would personally love to see, I mean, New Bedford Durfee aren't going to go anywhere. They're too big, and the big three is too easy of a division. It actually gives those two schools a chance to win against Brockton and get into the MIAA playoffs. I'd love to see Bridgewater Raynham hmm. and a return of a team that Brockton used to play a lot that has fallen off the map. And who was that? Taunton. Interesting. No, Taunton, Taunton Tigers? Taunton Tigers at D2 now. But rumor has it that they're going to come back up to D1. Look, a good sized school. They got a lot of students. Therese Harris for three, no good. Shot clock is off, 15 seconds to go. Brockton winning by a whopping 40 points, 79 to 39. We're gonna be talking with head coach Bob Bowen right after this one, getting his thoughts on a big win. Miles, Brockton winning by 40, 79 to 39. Yeah, and it was nice to see Brockton come out here and dominate a basketball game. They've had some tough games early on in the season, like with, with BC twice. and um, But it's just nice and good to see them dominate a basketball game offensively, offensively as well as defensively. Exactly, because now they come into the meat of their schedule. It's going to be tough now until the uh, playoffs. And um, 
So, Matt, go ahead. I guess you got the coach. Three over the Barnstable Red Raiders. Exactly what you guys were looking for coming into the new year? Oh, yes, it was. Uh, we've got to start winning some games now. We've played well a couple of times, but now we've got to win these games, play well and win the games. New uniforms, new year, new attitude for the Brockton Boxers? Well, I don't know if it's a new attitude. It's the developing attitude. We're developing the attitude. I thought our defense was excellent today, and I thought a couple of the guys like Sonny and Tyshawn really gave us the good aggressive game that we want to get going. Speaking of Sonny, had a career day. Hit a couple of threes from way downtown. Talk about his effort in today's win. Yeah, well, Sonny's threes are nice. It's nice that he made a couple of threes, but Sonny's effort was that rebounding. He had some tremendous defensive rebounds when he came in that first and just got us very aggressive. 79 to 39, the Brockton Boxers get a big 40 point victory over the Red Raiders of Barnstable High School. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. Thanks, coach. Thank